statement uh, about what we're trying to accomplish. So people see the kind of broad picture of what we're trying to do. As, as Debbie just said, I served in the legislature with uh, my good friend Jeff Deal for eight years. And, uh, and we really figured it out. The Democrats really don't care about us. They really don't care about what you believe in. Uh, they've made that quite obvious uh, over the last particularly 10 to 15 years. And we see our country, right? Just moving more and more to the left. You know, we're talking about forced vaccinations. We're talking about forced masks. We're talking about defunding the police. We're talking about illegal immigration. I don't know, but that's not the America that I grew up in. So we have to do something about it. And one of the things that happened in 2014 is that when Jeff and I were in the legislature, uh, the Democrats passed a piece of legislation that would have increased the gas tax forever, forever. Representative Mark Lombardo, who was also a Republican who served with us, when he went to the floor and he spoke about it, he said, you folks want to pass a tax that will go up for infinity and beyond with no accountability, none. And Jeff Deal decided back then that he was going to take that issue to the voters. So what he did was he decided to begin an initiative petition to eliminate the gas tax. And I was standing with Jeff in front of the state house the day that he announced that. And there was all kinds of media out in front. And I'm not just making this up. They were laughing at us. At Jim. At Jim. <laughs> they were legitimately <laughs> laughing. I was hiding, so they were laughing at Jeff. <laughs> and, 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 what, and what happened was one of the media, one of the state house news reporters who we know said to Jeff, Jeff, there's no way that you can win this. Why are you even doing it? Right? That's exactly what he asked. He said, the other side's going to have millions of dollars. You don't have any money. And uh, as a matter of fact, members of the Republican leadership in the House chastised Jeff for doing this. They said, you shouldn't do this. Because when you go on to Beacon Hill, you're taught the first thing is, you've got to get along with everybody. Well, guys, I started my business when I was 21. And I got elected when I was 57. And I just didn't have any patience to get along with everybody. I went in there to make a difference, okay? Just as Jeff did. In any event, what happened was, Jeff got that on the ballot, and it won 53 to 47. In Massachusetts, that's a whoop. For us to take a tax, overturn it at the ballot, 53 to 47 is a whooping. So, as the chairman of the party, I also know that we're still outgunned at the legislative level. So I decided to copy what happened in 2014. And that's what we're doing right now. We have three major initiatives that we're working on. One is the ballot initiative to provide medical care for babies born alive. I mean, I, I can't even say that. Uh, and to think that we don't have a law in Massachusetts that does that, we don't. My wife would have been with us tonight and she's the chairwoman of that committee, but unfortunately she couldn't be here. But my wife compares it to the upskirting bill. I don't know whether many of you folks remember the upskirting bill, but back in around the time 2012, there was a man that was arrested for driving on trains, taking pictures of women under their skirts. And he was arrested, and he was convicted, and he was gonna go to prison. They appealed it all the way to the SJC. The SJC reversed it and said he was innocent. And the reason he, they said he was innocent was because they said there is no specific language in the law that outlaws upskirting. Well, guess what? There is no language in the law that pro protects a baby born alive to receive medical care. So that's exactly why we're doing that. So when a baby born alive is born, they are entitled to medical care. Last year on December the 26th, this legislature in a budgetary session after the full legislature had adjourned, passed a bill that removed the medical requirement 
that babies born alive after an abortion are entitled to medical care. They passed it. Every single Republican in the state but one, and Governor Baker stood firmly against that bill. Unfortunately, we could not sustain Governor Baker's uh, veto. The second one we have is voter ID. Everyone knows what happened in November. Everyone knows that we don't, we no longer have confidence in our electoral system. We all know that. We all question it. We know right here in Massachusetts with Rayla Campbell that they kept her off the ballot intentionally. She was going to run against uh, Ayanna Presley, a member of the squad, would have become a national story. They didn't want that. Voter ID is a simple solution to a real problem here in Massachusetts to make sure that people are allowed to vote with an ID. It doesn't take rocket science to figure that out, that that's going to help the electoral process in Massachusetts. And finally, critical race theory. That's the third one. And that is going to require that our school teachers cannot teach our kids how to divide us. And what we're trying to do as a group is to stand up for those issues. Because we now understand the Democrats are not going to change it. They'll go to your parties, they'll go to your parades, they'll tap you on the shoulder, but guess what? They don't care what you think. Folks, it is up to each and every one of you to get up off the, off the couch and into the race. <laughs> off the couch and into the race. We, we can no longer sit aside, stay, stand aside. They're dead serious about taking this country away from us. They believe what they're telling us. They believe it and they want you to sit back, nod your head yes, and be afraid. President Donald J. Trump, the greatest president in my lifetime, taught us one thing. Do we agree? Yeah. The greatest president in my lifetime taught us one thing, that we have to be unafraid. We have to get up into the fight. Sometimes, as Ben Carson says, sometimes the way President Trump says it and the things that he does has us all scratching our head. But the one thing he taught each and every one of us that we have to fight for this country.